Hey everyone, Bob here, KD4PMG HOA Ham. Today I want to talk to you about one of the more exciting pieces of gear that I've used in a long time. It's exciting to me because I live in an HOA and this gives me a perfect opportunity to operate in stealth mode. I'm talking about the Chameleon Antenna Cha Portamast, which Chameleon provided to me for my test evaluation and review, and I'm using it in the 20 foot configuration. Most HOAs, and certainly mine, permit the use of flagpoles. So now I have a antenna mast, which I can convert with some simple things picked up off of the internet over to a flagpole. And I'm going to show you two different configurations that I use here in the HOA as a flagpole that allow me to get a wire antenna up and communicate all around the world. The Portamast is worthy of a series of videos and that's what it's going to receive from me. It'll conclude with a full review and let me just give you the final conclusion right now. It's fantastic gear. Exactly what we expect from Chameleon. Superb quality so I can highly recommend it. No need to wait around for the review. But let's talk about the various ways that we're going to show it off. It can be attached to your home or to a building using this mount. It can be put into the receiver of a two inch hitch with this alternate mount. It can be bolted to a deck, whether it's concrete or I guess a stick frame deck, if you put the right type of support there, would work. You can drive onto it with a vehicle. There are a number of ways to use this thing at the QTH as well as take it portable. In my case, I installed it in the ground, basically through a tube two and a half feet deep of concrete and this tube then goes inside of that concrete sleeve. So I will take you completely through that in an upcoming video. Today I want to talk about how I use this as an antenna mast slash flagpole and I use the in-ground installation. So when you see me putting this in the ground in a couple of minutes in this sleeve, just know a future video real soon will show you how to do that installation. Two things to cover before we go any further. This is not an antenna. This is an antenna mast. We're not intending to radiate any RF through the sturdy, well-built aluminum pole. It's an antenna mast. It holds our antennas. Secondly, some of you are going to suggest, well, why not just make the investment in a flagpole antenna itself? Well, there are a few manufacturers out there. They're a bit pricey, but if that's your use case and that's what you want, by all means, go that direction. For me, I wanted something that I could put up as a flagpole in the backyard, approved by the HOA, conceal it as an antenna mast and hang my wire off of it, as well as collapse it when I want to go operate at the local club and POTA or wherever I have an emergency situation where I need to operate somewhere away from the QTH. So this is dictated by your use case and what you want to be able to do. A child portamast is intended to be used in the backyard, in the front yard, as an antenna mast or a flagpole, and it's intended to be portable so you can take it with you wherever you need to operate. There are two ways for me to use the child portamast in my HOA. Where I live, you do not have to have a flag on your flagpole, or at least it's not enforced if you do. I could walk a mile down the sidewalk here where I live and see half a dozen flagpoles with nothing on them. So all I need to do is train my neighborhood that I have a flagpole. And one day I will fly a flag, and the next day I won't fly a flag, and I'll just do that intermittently. Everybody thinks I have a flagpole, and I do, but I also have a mast that's holding my nearly invisible wire that will never be seen by anybody here at the QTH. My preferred method of using this is to actually fly the American flag. And then I use one of the three rings that are on the Cha Portamast. It comes with one, I added two, and that bottom third one is what I use to attach my antenna wire to. And that antenna wire then goes down to a Chameleon Antenna Cha Hybrid Mini. That Cha Hybrid Mini, you're going to see me here just stick it into the Cha spike into the ground today because I'm still configuring this setup, but that will eventually get attached to the side of my house. And then it just blends in in a utility box and it looks like I have a flagpole in the backyard and a utility box on the side of the house. Completely stealth. 
Remember the top quarter mask comes with one ring at the top. Slide that one down a little bit lower on the top section, add a second one a little bit lower to the top section. You'll understand this when you do it. And then put the third one back in its original spot as delivered to you. Add to this two clips to the top rings that will hold your flag. And then I use what's called a cam jam on the bottom one, the third one from the top. And that cam jam will hold our shock cord which will keep some tension on our antenna wire. So here I am putting the post into the concrete pillar and trust me if you install that pillar right this thing's not going anywhere. The cam jam receives the shock cord from the back side and then it actually has a cam that jams tight up against the shock cord so you don't have to tie any knots and I use these often with shock cord and antenna wires. And here we are coming to the mast installed with the flag waving and here you can see that my cam jams installed with some shock cord going all the way down to my Cha Hybrid Mini. I don't know if you picked up on it, but there's something between that Cha Spike and that Cha Hybrid Mini. It looks like a round disc, maybe like a puck of some sort. And there's some kind of wire coming out from that puck. That's right. It's my radial wire. You're getting a sneak peek at a new Chameleon product soon to be introduced. And why, yes, that is a banana plug. These are banana plug radials. And boy, does this ever make setting up ground radials a simple task. Let me give you a couple of tips and tricks. Whether or not you hang a flag off of this telescoping antenna mast, this is a mechanical engagement system. This is not like our telescoping fiberglass masks that we take two sections and separate them and then twist to create friction. This is actually a mechanical engagement system. And as you can see from the brief video here, you can pull up the top section. It will hit the next section engagement system, twist it slightly counterclockwise, lift up a little bit more and a little bit more counterclockwise. And then it goes down and firmly engages. Do this section by section. And this is a solid mast up in the air. It's not going to collapse like those friction systems do. The next trick is the this. Do not actually put your wire antenna in the ground or attached to something else at the ground level and then raise the antenna system, raise the mast. You, you can do that, and I do it here in this video, but it puts side tension on the mast as you raise it up. And as you get to that top section, it becomes a little bit more difficult to engage that top section, or maybe I should say the bottom section as it's fully extended. I've done it here. And you could see me that I've done it successfully. I've done it both ways with no tension on the wire and with tension on the wire. And I found that to be easier with no tension on the wire. Last but not least, let's talk about that flag. How do you want to hang it? Well, you saw that I added clips to hang mine. And you can see here on the Chameleon website, they use a more traditional rope and pulley system. I imagine if you Google it, you can find many more methods. What size flag should you fly on your flagpole slash antenna mast? Believe it or not, there are size recommendations depending on how tall your mast is. For this 20 foot mast, the recommendation was three feet by five feet. And that looks appropriately sized as I fly my American flag. Also, when there's no wind blowing, and that flag droops down. The bottom of it hangs right at that first intersection at the top and the second section, which is right where my wire is attached. So it works out perfectly. Everywhere you look, there are homes around me. You need a calculator to count them all. I love living in the HOA and I'm not moving, nor am I going to stop operating ham radio. This holiday weekend, July 4th weekend, I have my Made in USA Cha Portamast, my Made in USA Cha Hybrid Mini. And once I'm done contacting all the 13 colonies on this antenna, I think I'll just take a spin around the world and make some global contacts. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have encouragement that you too can operate Backyard Portable in the HOA with some great gear. Talk to you soon, 73.